We must make sure all of these leads are thoroughly investigated before this case is rushed to closure and concluded as a suicide. When uh, Mr. Shirley and I met with uh, the district attorney, the police chief, and his entourage, my first question to the district attorney was, what is your protocol for investigating this type of incident and this type of death? And he said, there is no protocol. Um, I can't say what exactly she raised with the SBI. I do that, know that she raised the question of the shoes with the SBI. Okay, and, I, and I understand that they said that's an answer. Do we know where the shoes are? My understanding is they are in the custody of the Bladenboro Police Department. Now, I don't want to wake up tomorrow and hear on the news another young man, white, black, killed or murdered, anything like that. It's, it's hard and it's heartbreaking. I have kids myself. My son was the type of child that would rub my feet, massage my ankles. When they were swole after I worked all day, without asking, he's not there. All I want is to know why. Tonight I want to be very frank, very focused, and very upfront. I want to lay out some things to be clear about why we support the Lacey family in their quest and their desire for truth. That's why I wanted you to see this. Not just William Barber. I have here uh, Vice President uh, uh, Courtney Patterson, District Director Deborah Maxwell, uh, our Chair of Political Action, Professor Derek Smith, Attorney Heather Radderley. We have Brother Lacey here, who's long-term in this community, Dr. Lacey, and uh, Deacon in this church, Claudia Pierre. Uh, civil rights attorney, in fact, was the national civil rights attorney of the year, uh, Alan um, uh, McShirley, and also the pastor of this church and for the media, not that, uh, who's a Morehouse uh, graduate uh, and one of the many trained clergy within the State Baptist Convention, the family here and others who've come out. Let me start here. The family sought our help. And since then, we have been very careful to proceed with what we call due diligence in the search for truth. We're really here to stand with this mother, Claudia Lacey, this brother, Pierre Lacey, this father, and the entire Lacey family. On August 29, 2014, Lennon Lacey's body was found hanging, may I have a little water, from a child's swing set in a predominantly white trailer park in downtown Bladenboro, about a half mile from where he was last seen leaving his family home. Let me constantly and consistently reiterate that no one knows for sure what happened on that terrible night. But what has concerned the family has been the local authorities seemingly impatient, burning desire for easy answers 
and for closures. Which is why we who believe in freedom cannot rest. Whenever the circumstances of death are not clear, yeah. as is the case here, and I will talk about why we know that now, yeah. many questions arise. Now, if the basic facts were reversed, let's think about that for a minute. If Lennon was white and found hanging in a predominantly black neighborhood, would there have been a rush to determine that the cause of death was suicide? That's a critical question. Why did a suggestion that Lennox was depressed, clinically depressed, when there had been no clinical evaluation? because an autopsy cannot do clinical evaluation because the, the person is dead, they're not alive. You can only do a clinical assessment for a living person. So why did this notion of him being depressed get pushed as justification for the claim of suicide? Simply because, and, and this has been said over and over again to both them, it's not hearsay, because his mother was asked by an officer if Lennon was depressed, and she said yes, meaning he was mourning, like all of us are depressed whenever we lose a family. It doesn't mean clinical depression. It's, it's, it's in our culture. When we say depressed during bereavement, it means we're sad. That's exactly what it means. Not clinically depressed to avoid killing, but well, and I've said this on a number of occasions, especially to media who are reporting this. If you come to the average funeral in the average down home African American church, yeah. you might be quite confused about what happened. Because you'll see people doing a number of things. But that's how we hold each other together in community. It's in community that we might cry. We might lay on each other, we might get on our knees, you know, we might fall out. And then we're on the gravesite, we sing, and then we may come back and have a banquet together because that's how our community over the years has, has held one another. So his mother was simply saying, yes, she was asking, he's not gonna lie, yes, he was sad. But not clinically depressed to the point of killing himself. Well, There's a distinct difference between this and a diagnosis of suicidal depression. But the question we've raised consistently is why did the mother's other statement that she also made to the officer not end up in the report, which was the first thing she said when she saw him was, they have killed my son. Now how do you give credibility to one statement? and discount the other, if you are investigating. Because yeah. the point of an investigation is to look at all aspects and all possibilities. Yeah. When we had our first community service in Bladenburg, numerous person, people came forward, right, and spoke with our attorneys and said they had information of, of foul play, some of them, and we encouraged them to let their stories be known, and several of them were white. Uh, we've always encouraged them to tell their story because we do not obstruct justice. We want to see justice happen. We don't, we don't know if all of their stories were true, and that's not the point. The question remains, have they been thoroughly vetted? That's right. Have they been investigated? And has the family been, uh, uh, been told and been assured that we followed these leads and they pa didn't pan out or they did pan out? We've had calls in our office of persons calling in, in, in um, anonymity, saying don't stop the search for truth. And some of them have identified themselves as white and have said to our staff that people know, this is death, but people know what has really happened, left messages. We must make sure all of these leads are thoroughly investigated before this case is rushed to closure and concluded as a suicide. 
There are questions that have arisen between the correlation of certain elements of the community that have had a history of violence and racial hatred and drugs and law enforcement that have, have, are known, or at least we believe that it's known, that they were among the last to have contact with Lennon. Have they been thoroughly investigated? Have they? That's the question. The NAACP is not CSI. <laughs> we do not have the power nor the skills to review the Thai death scene. We have to rely on law enforcement and that's why we must always demand a thorough investigation. Which is why when we were with you last time, we said that we were going to hire a pathologist. We told you that. We said we'd come back and tell you the report in this right. community. Because we know that there are people who are professionals at doing this. Now there is always the possibility that a 17-year-old black man might, might hang himself. But for black men and boys, most hangings in the South were not self-inflicted. That's right. That is why we have just left the U.S., we, we, we went to the U.S. attorney and asked for a federal investigation, turned over to them everything we had and numerous leads that need to be investigate. And if there are any needs leads here, you need to come forward. You've heard anything. There may be some evidence that suggests the hanging victim is scared or depressed, but there also may be evidence that he was a target of others who wanted to do him harm, and the truth may be somewhere in between. But trust comes, justice comes, when truth is sought. You can't trust and believe in justice until you know that all of the truth has been sought out and investigated. You just can't. And that's why we have asked the Justice Department to throw its full weight behind a comprehensive and thorough investigation. Thorough investigation. You know, this family is in a hard place. And I don't even know how to articulate it. You know, my wife is here, my son, two of my sons, Claudia. You know, when you're in a place psychologically where you almost would rather it be suicide than a lynching, but with all of the questions out there, you don't have any closure. And either way it closes, it's hard and hurtful, and they need our prayers. Now, I want to say something that they said to me early on, and, and, and I, I don't want to misinterpret Claudia, so correct me. This lady, in her strength and her faith, said, look, I'm prepared to accept the truth, but what I'm not prepared to accept is what is being told now without it being proven to be so. Because listen at what they are being asked to accept and see would you, white or black, be comfortable with this. That their son, brother, cousin walked out of his home the night before his first big home football game that he'd been preparing for all summer. That he would have hidden his brand new shoes that he had been wearing so no one could find them that he would have found a pair of older low top sneakers that are not even his own, two sizes too small, taken the strings out of them, jammed them on his feet. Then he would have walked alone to a trailer park owned by a white man who was in prison for drilling drugs, that he would have picked up two belts along the way, fashioned a noose out of them all by himself, that when he got there, he would have picked a swing set with no swings hanging from it, taken the belt, tied it to the beam, and through the eye hook, and then put the leash around his, uh, belt around his neck and swung himself out to his own self-inflicted death, and that he did all of this with no one around, nothing to stand on, remained there until 7 o'clock a.m. or so in the morning, after people were leaving for work, going to Smithfield plant or going to school, and nobody saw anything. 
and they are being asked to accept this without knowing that all of the other factors and leads have not been accept, exhausted. This family is strong, has deep roots, and they can accept some things, but they are not prepared to accept this, and neither are we until all of the promising leads have been investigated. Neither is Attorney Rogers and Attorney McSherlin and Attorney Radley. You must give them more than just we feel like this is what basically what happened. That's right. Now, tonight, members of the media, I'm going to be very uh, professorial and read to you from the pathology report. Not hearsay, not innuendo, but the pathology. And once I finish, you'll be able to ask the attorneys questions. Here are some things you should know. The family was told by SBI agents that there was not a protocol or procedure used to investigate this type of case, presumably referring to a suicide. Now listen very carefully. However, Multiple treatises and peer-reviewed journal articles recognize, and this is not my words, these are the words of professionals, in cases of suspicious death, particularly where suicide may or may not be the manner of death, the death scene investigation is more important than the autopsy. Listen now, how you handle the scene. Secondly, the U.S. Department of Justice and the National Institute of Justice promulgate technical guides for death scene investigation. For the media, it is entitled Death Investigations, a guide for the scene investigator. Say scene investigator. Scene investigator. It recognizes that the death investigator, I'm reading from the U.S. Department of Justice manual, the death investigator is the eyes and the ears of the forensic pathologist at the scene. These guidelines are intended to reflect best practices of the forensic community and serves as a national standard. These guidelines detail protocols and practices for various death scene investigation and tasks. Among the things that must take place to meet the minimum standard for how you care for a death scene is investigative equipment, arriving and securing the scene, pronouncing the death, briefing the scene, processing the scene, establishing a chain of custody, follow laws related to the collections, inventory, and preservation of forensic evidence, photographing the scene, documenting the scene, photographing the body, preserving evidence on the body, documenting post-mortem changes, ensuring security of remains, profiling, profiling the, the, uh, uh, the deceased, and completing the death scene investigation. The NAACP's preliminary investigation suggests, and we feel, and we believe, that these basic guidelines were not followed. All right. They're not our guidelines. They're standards, just basics. As recognized by Dr. Roberts, when conducting, and Heather, tell them who Dr. Roberts is. Dr. Roberts is the medical pathologist that the NAACP consulted. Um, she reviewed the medical, the North Carolina Medical Examiner's autopsy right. in this case, okay. reviewed the records, and interviewed the North Carolina State Medical Examiner. All right. Dr. Roberts says when conducting a death investigation to determine the COD, which means cause of death, right? Yeah. An MOD, manner. manner of death, it is necessary. Not, not, not just something you could do. It is necessary to gather all of the information about the person's medical, social, psychiatric history and the events of the days leading up to their death. Mm -hmm. That's what the professional said. Right. Listen, there is no indication that this was done in this case. 
No medical, social, psychiatric history. What went on the days before, before you make a ruling or a call. There is no indication it's done in this case when the investigator notified the OCMCME, on call, state medical, state medical examiner, that he believed the cause of death was suicide by 3.08 p.m. on the same day. If Leonard was found at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, Huh? That's, that's less than eight hours for you to have d gathered all the information. And this is on page one, paragraph four of the report. He never even searched Lennon's room for a suicide note. Well, Professor, it, is, it should also be noted that there are variations of a... Uh, choke hole, the variation called the lateral vascular neck restraint is where the anterior neck is held in an anti-cupital fossil front of the elbow and the forearm is pulled downwards toward the arm compressing the vessels on both sides of the neck. This is basically a pincher movement with both sides of the neck between the arm and the forearm. This hole can be applied without injury to the underlying internal neck structures, or if there is a struggle, there can be blood in the muscles and fractures of the superior corner of the thyroid cartilage during our conversation with Dr. Radish. She agreed that one would be unable to tell at autopsy if death occurred via this type of choke hole and then the body was placed in a suspension noose. That's in par page, four, page four, paragraph four of the pathology report. There are multiple conflicting stories about how Miss Benson allegedly lowered Lennon's body to the ground. In any event, none seem plausible. The only objective way to reach a reliable conclusion is with actual not estimated measurements of the belt and the crime scene reconstruction. There is conflicting information about what occurred at the scene between the representative from the medical examiner's office and the police. Mr. Kinlaw was the local medical examiner who responded to the scene. He reports that officers didn't want an autopsy performed and he had to have the district attorney office order one. The case encountered from notes that the SBI agents requesting uh, an autopsy, Dr. Radish stated that under these circumstances, an autopsy absolutely would have been performed. She asked the DA to order one because of conflict between the agencies. Page three, paragraph five. Of, our, of the pathology report. The OCME's file indicates that no crime scene photos were provided because the crime scene tech was working on another homicide. <laughs> Dr. Radish was not provided with photographs or dimensions of the swing set. Without this information, she would be unable to evaluate the ability to create the suicidal scenario posited by investigators in this case. Page five, paragraph one. In other words, the physics have to work. If, in other words, if the, if, the hole, if the keyhole is way over here and the belt is this long and you're way over there, then that physics don't work. If the keyhole is way up there and you're short, you have to have something to stand on. If you don't have something to stand on, you can't jump and tie it. So the, this question, we're just saying questions. Next, there are a number of concerning factors about the apparent noose. The picture provided show that the black belt was not consistent with the one worn by Lennon. The blue belt is reported to be consistent with a belt worn by a male who resided in the mobile home where Lennon was last known alive. What is most concerning about the apparent noose is that the person who called 911 said she was going to cut the person that she found down. 
review of the photographs show that the two belts are tied together with a signal cut to each at the tie point. The other free ends of the belt are completely intact and have no secondary cuts. Only a very short piece of each belt extends past the tied area and could not have been tied around the cross beam. Note that when meeting with Dr. Radish, she stated that when she examined the belt, she thought some portion must be missing because there was no secondary cut in either belt. Page three, paragraphs two and three. Next. Mr. Kinlaw, the local medical examiner, reports that when he placed Lennon's body in the body bag, he was wearing white sneakers without laces. These shoes were not on the body when he arrived at the medical examiner's office. Review of the photographs show that they are size 10 and a half. Lennon wore size 12 and the shoes he had on that night were gray. During our meeting with Dr. Radish, she stated she had asked SBI about the shoes, but they simply offered it, had been explained, and did not elaborate further. Dr. Radish said it was not the usual practice for police to remove clothing from the body before transport. Page three, paragraph six. Dr. Radish's determination of method of death in this case was as suicide was based on the information she was provided by law enforcement and the local medical examiner at the time of autopsy when preparing her report. She would have likely called the method of death pending while awaiting toxicology and investigation, but the LME had already signed the MOD as suicide. Page five, paragraph two. If investigative information was provided by an independent agency, police, SBI, or another investigative agency, not the family, this is what she said, that Lennon's death represented something other than suicide, Dr. Radish, the state medical examiner, right? Dr. Radish said, she would reconsider the method of death. She would likely change the manner of death to undetermined by awaiting additional investigation. Page five, paragraph three. Now my friends, this is not easy to do. We don't know what happened. But from this pathology report, we know one thing, there's a lot of unanswered questions <laughs> that we cannot rest with. Serious, unanswered questions. And you can't just, and these are not innuendos, these are not things we made up, this is not something we got in a room. This is a professional pathology expert putting their license, their credentials on the line, saying, when I did this review, it does not appear that the minimum standards of investigation and scene preservation were done in this case. I, we believe that Lennon's hands were not even wrapped in plastic to preserve if there was any DNA under his fingernail. Now, how many of you in this room, it doesn't matter to me whether you're black, white, old, or young, would want this, a person of your family to be found hanging and find out that the authorities did not even do the minimum, the basic standard investigation according to the Department of Justice? How many of you would want to accept that as a final answer when you know that they didn't even do photo, they didn't do the basics? Is anybody in here would want that for your family? I don't, doesn't matter to me whether you're black or white. Huh? Huh? Doesn't matter. That's right. See? This is about just basic fairness, basic protocol. You shouldn't come to a mother and tell her that a 17-year-old kid excited about life and going forward uh, 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 committed suicide and then try to use her words to justify your fast conclusion because perhaps you did not do, and the question becomes why? 
Why, 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 why didn't you do this full investigation? Why was the crime, the scene opened, the scene opened up before the evening was over mm -hmm. and people could walk through? Why wasn't it preserved at least a day? Do, do, do you really think, even if it was proven that a white boy committed suicide, do you really think if you found a young white 17 year old football player hanging in a trailer park, a predominantly black trailer park, that it would be quickly? I, I would hope not because I don't want anything done that quickly. See, somebody gonna twist that. They're gonna say, you're raising a racist. No, you're not hearing what we're saying. That these standards by the US Department of Justice says this should not happen to anybody. And when you give a family answers, they ought to be assured that law enforcement has done their job because the person doing the autopsy Because the person doing the autopsy depends on what happens at the scene. If the scene is contaminated and spoiled, it undermines the autopsy. You say, well, what if they were to come back and do the investigation and you still, that's, that still does not have anything to do with this family demanding that it be done and saying we cannot settle for this. Especially when on top of this, people have come forward and suggested, and we've told them to go to the authorities. They can't come, come you gotta go to the authorities. Have suggested that they have information that's something other. Now, the media say, well, tell us, we can't do that because what we have done so that we are not in, that we're not in a part of what they call obstructing justice, we have turned over our complete file with all of the leads and everything to the U.S. Because we don't believe at this point the local authorities can do it. Right. We've asked for the Justice Department. I want to announce to you that I talked to our national president, Cornell Brooks, informed him of the pathology report. He's a lawyer. He's now walking from St. Louis to, uh, to, to Jefferson City. I was just down there with him, and even before I went down there, and he agreed with me and said that based on the pathology report, that's enough to call for a federal investigation and he and the national office support the North Carolina State Conference in that call for a national, for a federal. I report to you as a community tonight that we met with the U.S. Attorney Walker for more than two hours and they heard our case and took the report and said that they would turn it over to the proper authorities within the U.S. Department of Justice for review. And we are confident, we believe by faith, that after that review in a few days we will hear that they will in fact open a federal investigation because there are too many questions for us to just be satisfied. The Bible said there's a sound being heard in Ramah. That's right. Rachel weeping and mourning for her children are no more, but refusing to be comforted. And I said it the first time and I'll say it here to anybody. Don't you ask Claudia to be comforted. Don't you ask her to just go away and hush. Don't you ask her to demand that a right kind of investigation be done. Her up here. Whatever comes out of it, they deserve that. You deserve it because you need to know what's going on in this community and who may be living among you. White or black, you need to know. If, there is if there's credible evidence of foul play, you ought to want to know in this community. If there are conditions in this community that could cause someone to be suicidal, you ought to want to know that. If you have law enforcement that, 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 that we believe when they investigate certain things don't use the full spectrum of investigatory uh, uh, tools, you should know since you're paying for them, they're your employees. And if they're your employees, they ought to be following the standards of law enforcement in every case, regardless of race, creed, class, income, or sexuality. 
one standard of justice. Equal protection under the law. I also want to announce tonight, and then we'll take questions, that young people in this community, Pierre told me, are having a rally this coming Saturday. Remembrance of Lenin. And I called Pierre Claude, and I hope he, he, I know he shared with you that in light of this, on December the 13th, Pastor, in the morning, we're going to lead a march in Bladenboro to call for this federal investigation. My prayer is it will be a march celebrating that the U.S. Attorney has already agreed and that they are initiating a federal investigation. But if not, it will be a march for Lennon, a march for justice, and a march for a full, thorough investigation. Claudia, we can't bring Lennon back, but we can declare this Christmas and in the months ahead, you will not face this alone. Members of the media, members of the media, questions? In the back. Yes, since you are having a number of calls coming into the uh, state office for the NAACP, uh, and who are you referring, what authorities are you referring those calls to report what they may know or? To the uh, United States Attorney in uh, Raleigh, his name is Thomas Walker. He's appointed by President Obama. He, there's a, uh, what do you call it, US, uh, assistant U.S. attorney named Jane, Jane, Jackson. Jane Jackson, who is looking into our case right now. So you, all you have to do is look up U.S. Attorney Eastern Division, which is in the Raleigh Courthouse. method of death or suicide, is that Ken Law? Yes. Who did that? Yes. The so, local so medical what? examiner is an elected official in this county, and um, he's the county coroner, and um, his name is Mr., I think, Harold Ken Law. Okay, so he both petitioned the DA for an autopsy, but then went ahead and signed the method of death as a suicide before that autopsy took place. Is that correct? Before the autopsy was completed. Before that, it was completed. That That is our understanding. That is why... Dr. Radish's report says that there's conflicting information as to who was actually requesting the autopsy. Do we know that standard procedure? Is that, is that to sign off on a manner of death No, it, it, it is not. As, as, as a post-conviction attorney who works on murder cases for a living, generally when an autopsy is conducted, the manner of death remains pending until the state medical examiner has completed her investigation and <coughs> issues an official autopsy report. And do we know, we mentioned uh, that she thought maybe a section of the belt was missing. Did she raise this with the S SBI or did she just accept that it was missing? Did she just... I, I, I can't, you would have that. to talk to Dr. Radish about that. Okay, I can't so we don't know, that was never she, clarified. Um, I can't say what exactly she raised with the SBI. I do that, know that she raised the question of the shoes with the SBI. Okay, and I, and I understand that they said that's the an answer. Do we know where the shoes are? My understanding is they are in the custody of the Bladenboro Police Department. <laughs> and this brings me to my next question. Let me ask something. Let's, let's do this. I know there's a need to kind of laugh because it's so outlandish, but let's respect Claudia and Pierre. They're not laughing. They're not laughing. And this is, let this be as you would, this is a house of God, let it be as you would respect the courtroom. Let's hold our reactions because there's going to be a time for you to show how you feel. But let's make sure we give the attorneys and the media a question of really, and cause you need, you're learning too tonight, right? Yes. Okay, so you want to get it just right. Yes, no, you have no, no turn what no, you just said. Feel free. Feel free. Um, you know, it's
it's obviously a, a subject of national discussion, the relationship between police departments and the community. And I've heard mutterings in this crowd tonight that, that <coughs> it was rushed to judgment because police didn't care. And I'm just curious, do we know if any members of the Bladenburg Police Department are here tonight? It was announced. Is there that community interaction going on, or is it just? Are, are there any members of the Bladenboro Police Department present tonight? No. They were at the first one. Were they here at the first? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, Media? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, he won't, even though that's not the purview of the DA to do that. We have a right as citizens. Claudia, Pierre, the family has a right to ask for a federal investigation. Uh, but it is, it, is, it is not as though this team, and that's important to know, because uh, what we want is these matters should be, since these are our elected and paid officials, you should not have to worry as to whether or not a full and thorough investigation has gone forward. And our logic is quite different than what you saw, for instance, in Ferguson. If you remember the night that the DA there announced the verdict, he said on camera there was conflicting testimony. Well, in the legal community, if I'm right, Turner, if there's conflicting information, that's when you do go to trial. <laughs> what we're saying here is there's conflicting investigative results. And there must be, must be a serious and thorough investigation rather than a rush to closure and a rush to simply tell this family that their 17-year-old son committed suicide. That, that is unacceptable. Uh, at this particular point. Yes, sir, and then yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, Steve Devon, Federal Observer. Uh, a couple of things. One, I want to be sure I'm clear about the shoes situation. Um, were the shoes that he originally had on, were they found somewhere? Are they still missing? And is the, um, and the other thing I want to be sure I'm clear on, is the only way that the, the Department of Justice can investigate is if this is determined to be a, a hate crime or is there some other? Civil rights crime also. Any, any kind of race-based uh, crime. That's the essence of the uh, of these civil rights laws. As to the shoes, the last time we met with District Attorney John David, that was November 18th. And we did discuss the shoes at that point, and during that meeting, he, is not, he, did, he did not indicate to us that those shoes had been found. So, to our knowledge, those shoes are still missing as of today. But he left with one pair of shoes on, and he was found with a different pair of shoes on. Is that correct? Yes. The last, the last anybody saw him, he had on his new uh, high tops. Question, yes, ma'am. Media? Yes, well, that was my question. I was okay. from Charlotte, North Carolina. All right. The county news. It was a great gig here, long ride. I know that. <laughs> but you say, I mean, you say there was one shoe on when he left? No. No, he had, he had the gray shoes on when he left, the gray Nikes. And when he was found the next morning, he had on white, what are they called? Low top Low Nikes. Low top. Air Force One type shoes that were two sizes too small. How did he have them on? That was, I mean, I've read a lot about this. How did he have the shoes that only were two sizes too small? Were they hanging off or? They were secured on the feet according to Ken Law. According to the local medical examiner who did respond again, to the scene. Without any laces. Let Alan Rogers. No, I was just saying that the shoes, he, he didn't have any shoelaces on the shoes. And from what I understand, I think one of the shoes had fallen off. But I think the point is, those shoes were not transported with his body to Chapel Hill. Nor were they here. Yes, in the back. One more question. And then right here. And let me just preface this. There may be some things the attorneys do not answer because we cannot mess up in on this ongoing investigation of things. That's why there's some things right now we're not telling you because we've turned those things over to the U.S. attorney and we have a responsibility in that regard not to... Uh, contaminate uh, the investigation. Yes, sir. Who are you with? Uh, I'm a freelance. Who? Freelance okay. magazine writer. Uh, is, you know, this blue belt that was reported consistent with someone who lived in the trailer park, where did that information come from? I'm sorry, could you repeat one, that of the, one of the belts which was reported consistent with someone that lived in the trailer park, where did that information come from? That was in the pathology report. Multiple witnesses. And how have the Bladenboro police reacted to the developments in this case? I don't know that we got a response to it. Have they remained silent, entirely silent? Yeah. Say that again? Have they remained entirely silent on, on all the developments happening in this case? The NAACP has not had a response. Yeah, from the Bladenboro Police Department. Yes, ma'am. Casey Cunningham. So, I, uh, first quick question. So, when are we expected to find out whether or not the FBI will be investigating the case? 
couple days or end of the week? We certainly hope within the next couple of weeks. Okay, and then second question, when I reached out to the district attorney's office, um, you know, they said, just to clarify something Reverend Barber said, um, you know, you said the case is kind of being rushed to a close. They tell me the case is still, you know, entirely open and they are pursuing the lead. So where, what's your response to that? Well, I guess it depends on who is, what someone's definition of open is. If you tell a grieving mother and a grieving brother and a father and a family that the cause of death was suicide and you sign off on that, that's a form of closing. If you say, though, you are open to new information and you're going to continue to investigate, then that's a form of open. One of the things, though, in the report is important that the medical examiner uh, seems to strongly suggest that if the information that was had, was that the pathologist had put forward and the questions were there, that, and it was raised by an independent, someone other than the family, which is the pathologist other than the family, then the case would be considered she would have never said she was, a, she was a cause of death pending. But also, remember what we read this in the report, where the SBI investigator said there is no evidence of foul play. That's closed. Some, that means you've, you've developed a closed attitude because on the front end, you decided prematurely what the cause was. You see what I'm saying? And so that's, that's the question that we have to uh, raise. And the question is, go back in the media report, what did the DA say to the media? Go back and look at some of the media reports. I, I don't have them right in front of me, but then the media report, is he saying to you now that the case is still open? And if the case, what does that mean? Have they, have they come to the parents and said that we are gonna say that it was not suicide, the cause of death is still pending, and we're gonna dig deeper and we're gonna do the investigation? This is not just about mincing words, this is about action. Because what we know from the pathology report is that there was a move far too quickly. Crime scene closed far too quickly. And I wanna go back through this because I, I, we want to raise this you know, from a very, and, and you know, I could be very, very, very um, um, emotional tonight dramatic maybe, to, I am emotional because I'm on the inside, y'all ought to see. But you know, I'm trying not, I don't want y'all to get distracted by nothing, the twitch of my nose, the movement of my hands. I'm just trying to be real professorial. The National Institute of Justice and the U.S. Department of Justice lays out the protocols, the practices, that should be engaged in a death scene investigation, the death scene, doesn't say death scene, to ensure that a, that a thorough investigation has taken place. And when you read this list, this is not my list, investigative equipment, arriving and securing the scene, pronouncing the death, briefing the scene, processing the scene, establishing the chain of custody, follow laws related to the collections, inventory and preservation of forensic evidence, photographing the scene, documenting the scene, photographing the body, preserving the evidence on the body, documenting post-mortem changes, ensuring security of remain, profiling the, 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 the descendant, and completing the death scene investigation. When you just read those standards and look at the questions and the holes that the pathology report has put out, no matter what the DA is saying about it still being open, this case was rushed to closure, and if it's open, I will say this, not the attorney, this is the president of the NAACP, if it is open, then this family should be given full assurance that every lead anywhere that's out there is going to be investigated, and it should be an omission that some things were done that could have been contaminated the investigation. What happens those first few hours at a scene of death has extraordinary impact on how we are able to ultimately find the truth. That's why it is important now 
If you know rumors and you know things, uh, people are saying things, it, it's, it's important, it's important to, to make sure, it's important to make sure that you turn those things in, whether through the U.S. attorney, our attorneys, and, and here's the other thing the media ought to ask. If the case is, is um, closed, right, closed, mm -hmm. then give the family full access to everything so that we can have and they can have independent reviewers look at that. So we, you know, it, it's one thing to say something to you in a media question. What we're looking for is what's actually happening. And that is why we've asked the U.S. attorney to truly open a full investigation of the hanging death of Lennon Lacey. Brother and Dr. Barber, I'll add, when uh, Mr. Shir Mr. Shirley and I met with uh, the district attorney, the police chief, and his entourage, my first question to the district attorney was, what is your protocol for investigating this type of incident and this type of death? And he said, there is no protocol. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I just want to confirm what you're saying is yes or no. So, so my understanding is that a case becomes close when the dog death has been signed off on, that this is suicide. Um, I don't know why someone would investigate that more. Now I'm hearing that the district attorney is saying that the case is still open. Just want to make absolutely sure that at no point he has contacted the family to say, we are still looking into this. So the family has been told this is suicide. And, and I have read police, uh, the <coughs> media reports that say where the district attorney has said he's been proud of the job in the beginning, that he was proud of the job his, uh, that the investigators did. Um, Sorry, am I asking that clearly? I, I just want a yes or no. Has, has, has any, since suicide was declared, has any outreach happened with the family? We, we met with the district attorney on November 18th. At that meeting, the district attorney assured us he was very confident of the, of the investigation that had occurred in this case. And at that point, they had no reason to believe that there was any foul play involved. So despite them saying that this case is still open, they have not once, since November 18th when you met, contacted the family to pursue further avenues of inquiry or anything else, correct? Correct, they have not said anything okay. to the family. Me, my mother, anybody in my family have not said anything. Correct. But to, to uh, DA uh, David's uh, not credit, but to, to I'm coming back to uh, the, the other question, uh, we told him that day, November 18th, we were going to go to the feds, go to the United States Attorney. He said uh, he would welcome that. And uh, so it's possible that he was allowing that process to take place. Uh, we know that they know we've, we went to him because we sent a copy of the letter that we, the cover letter we gave to, uh, uh, which I think some of you all have. have. Yes. Yeah. Well, they, they probably have people here tonight, so they're going to know even more. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what you said that the, uh, or the DA has said that he doesn't believe there's, or he hasn't seen evidence of foul play. Have, can you say, do y'all have evidence that there is foul play, and have you presented that to well, him? Or well, do you believe there's been foul play? Well, what we have is this pathology report that raises an incredible amount of questions. What we have are people who have come to us, and we're not going to discuss those things in public because we, again, don't want to be guilty of contaminating investigation. We've turned those over to the proper authority. And what we believe is with this pathology report, we certainly have enough evidence and credibility to demand a full and thorough um, investigation and to say that the rush to suicide uh, was indeed a rush and that the very basic standards of investigation and preservation of a death scene were not complied with. That in itself 
As we've said all along, nobody knows exactly what happened on that night, but the, the investigation that was done, the shabby and rushed investigation, has not um, settled those questions uh, uh, either. Um, mm -hmm. I'm listening to my attorney. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, and so one of the things, as I said, we turned over. Give me a minute to consult. Come here, come here, sir. Because we we got to be real particular. Because we're serious about this. So here, here's what we will tell you. You heard me say all along that we're talking about a full and thorough investigation. It would be wrong for us in a proceeding like this to ask for an investigation and then do what they did, reach a conclusion. What we're saying is we have these leads. We've turned them over to the U.S. Attorney. We believe that they need to be um, uh, uh, investigated, all of them that come in. We are not giving them to John David and the local authorities because of our concerns about how they have handled it up to this point. We have an obligation to give it to authorities, so we've given it to the federal authorities. All right? And, that, and that's as much as we can say about those leads. We're not going to touch, say one thing about them. And that's why we're not trying. This is serious business. It's not about trying to just be dramatic and say we know that. It's about saying they can't say what he is and they have not even met the very basic standards of an investigation. And, this, and that, look at Claudia, she's shaking her head. That's all she's asked for. And at this point, that's not been received. Let me take two more questions. Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Brown, why did the city medical examiner indicate what kind of information it would take for her to change the cause of death to undetermined? Is the second pathology report enough for her? The state medical examiner has to operate basing her, her, her conclusions on law enforcement and law enforcement's investigation. She cannot rely on a, a family's expert or, or the family's evidence that they bring to her because law enforcement are sworn law enforcement officials. Those are the people that she can rely on that evidence to be reliable and um, trustworthy. As far as what she would, what it would take, um, I don't want to speculate on, on what it would take for Dr. Radish to change that report. But I think, as as the as Dr. Roberts' report states. You know, anything that would call into question whether or not it was even possible for Lennon to hang himself in the manner that law enforcement says, which there is kind of a question there. At this point, we haven't even been given a clear hypothesis of how law enforcement is saying he actually hung himself. And I think that's important. That's why we're sticking real close to this pathology report, and we're asking the media to do that. We're not going way out here, way out there. We're, the family's asked us to be very focused and very deliberate, because when you're asking for truth, then you don't exaggerate one way or the other. You stick right with it. And that's why I read for you from you. I did not get up here without notes and just talk off the cuff. What you heard me read to you and, and give to you was exactly what was from the pathology report with paragraphs and page numbers so that you can go back and follow that as well. And we believe the media ought to ask these hard questions to the folk who were supposed to be doing it. Ask about these standards. Ask these questions. That's part of the media's job. And we thank you for, for probing that. Last question. Uh, that is great. was desecrated early on. And the Wait, where police said they had a suspect and then nothing much was ever heard of it after that. I just wanted to know if you had any information about what happened with that. 
Well, that's a prime example of the darkness the family has been kept in. The family has been notified that there has been arrest in that case, and that that person that was arrested is an adult, not a juvenile. But the district attorney's office or the Bladenboro Police Department have yet to inform the family of who that person was. And under the Victim Crimes Rights Act of North Carolina, they're entitled to know that information. But as of this date, the district attorney has not given the family that information. And there again raises another why. Why does somebody go to the grave of someone that authorities claim committed suicide and desecrate the grave that was put there as a monument by black and white football players, right? Trying to honor their friend. What, what's, what's, why is that? What, what, what's going on there? So, as one poet said, if you ask the right whys and the right hows, sometimes you get to the right who's. And right now, there are a lot of whys that have to be answered sufficiently and credibly. And again, Claudia is in an enviable position that mothers were in that first Christmas when they were crying because the judicial system was overseeing the death of black boys. And Matthew lifted a text all the way from Jeremiah and said, you can hear the sound of Rachel weeping in Ramah, refusing to be comforted because her sons are no more. Claudia, would you have a word? You and Pierre, you all are really the strength in this case, and I don't know if you... I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you want to say anything, even thanks to the people, or it's, all, it's all your decision, or Pierre's. And then we're going to have prayer together, church. Helen, come here. Alan, come up here with me. Um, I just want to come out and say Pastor. thanks for everybody supporting us. Um, I see a lot of your support on Facebook. I really do appreciate it. Um, I've since this has happened to my brother. I started a prayer page on Facebook because I saw the RIP page was, it was a lot of negativity going on and my brother was not about negativity. So I started the Lennon Lacey prayer group on Facebook. I've been tagging a lot of you guys, uh, hoping that you guys are joining. In. It's nothing but just Bible scriptures and prayers and just, just the light and the word of God to expand to the people because that's what my brother life represented. Um, I'm very upset. I'm still hurt that he gone. You know, um, holidays is really rough. I know all his friends is feeling the same thing. Holiday blues because he's gone. His plate at the, his plate at the table, it just sits empty. You know, and it's not because he's clean. It's because he just he's not there. You know. Um, I don't know why anybody would do this to my brother. You know, he didn't, he didn't deserve this. And um, I just hope that, you know, you guys will continue to come out and support the family and just help us get to the bottom of the truth of why someone would do this to my brother and just hope that this won't happen to nobody else and nobody else's family. We pray every day, Pastor see me. I come in church every Sunday and I pray and I just hope that we keep our, our family safe and in this community, it's a, it's a lot of secret society things going on. And I don't understand why I have to be secret when that, that life is over. Mm. It's 2014, getting ready to be 2015. There ain't no black and white, mm -hmm. Hispanic. It, we all the same color from the same, we came from, originated from the same That's land. Right. That's right, son. You know, there is, there is no color or creed. I mean, we all the same. We're people. We're human beings. We mm -hmm. all survive and we all struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, we just need to pull together and just prevent stuff like this from happening. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to wake up tomorrow and hear on the news another young man, white, black, mm -hmm. killed or murdered, anything like that. It's, it's hard and it's heartbreaking. I have kids myself. You know, I have a son and a daughter. Right now, because of what happened to my brother, I don't know what to tell my son as to raise him as a man. I want to say, well, son, go to school, get good grades and do right, but they killed or 
allowed my brother to die. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what do you tell your son that's coming up in this world? Just say, son, we got to go to church and pray, stay prayed up, and let the blessings come down. That's the only thing that I can, you know, the only guidance I can give them. But like I said in the beginning, I, I appreciate the support. And I hope anybody with any information just come forth and feel free to share with the attorneys and all the members of the NAACP. Um, we're going to keep pushing for justice. We're not going to rest. Um, That's right. And we we definitely not going to let this go in silent like they want us to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. stand here and look at all your faces um, I just want to say you have no idea to have to listen and look and not hear and see the person that was always there my son was the type of child that would rub my feet massage my ankles when they were swole after I worked all day without asking he's not there all I want is to know why. Just why? Answer some of the questions to give me some closure to understand. Thanksgiving was hard, but I made it through. Christmas, like this family is here. But like I said, you'll never understand until you lose one that's close. Like I said, you could look at each other and see your sisters, your brothers, but just imagine them not being there. Just imagine not hearing their voice or looking and not seeing and listening and not hearing. Thank you for coming out and keep praying for me and my family. What you're feeling, and we're feeling, is nothing like what Claudia is dealing with. Amen. Amen. All we want is assurance, and she wants is that everything was done to investigate this. Nothing covered up or hidden or dismissed just because people may not want to deal with the truth. <coughs> we can handle truth. Yeah. Because it sets you free. As it will. But rushing and half investigating and not paying attention to the basic protocols and not answering the question is something that none of us would settle for. Claudia is not going to be comforted anytime soon, no matter what, because she's got to live with it. That's right. But would you join her and the Lacey family, if, if it's your, if you feel it, would you say, so they can hear it, we won't be comforted either. We won't be comforted either. Until, Until there is. Full, and, full and, thorough and thorough and open, and open investigation, investigation of the death of Lennon Lacey. Lace. Lace. Would you say a little louder? We will not, we will not be comforted, be comforted either. either. We stand, we stand with, our sister, with our sister Claudia, Claudia. And, we and we will stand until, until there, is there is a full and thorough, and thorough 
and open, and open investigation, investigation of our young brother, brother Lennon Lacy. Lennon I want to ask Claudia if you don't mind, you Pierre, if the family would come up here right in the center and if everybody would touch somebody until the last people are touching this line of this family. And I'm going to ask this pastor. Yeah. Pierre and Claude, y'all come right there, right here in the center. And turn this way, facing pastor. Because we're going to let you know. Everybody reach out and touch somebody. And I need some people from the audience touching them so that it can be seen that, yeah. That's right, Law. Amen. Pastor. Hey, uh, last close. Let's pray together. The Bible reminds us of two or three are gathered in my name, touching and in agreement. I am in the midst. In the stillness of the moment, we sense your spirit. In the stillness of the moment, we sense your comfort. In the stillness of the moment, we sense your presence. In the stillness of the moment, we say thank you. Thank you for the life of Lennon Lacey. And God, we pray tonight that his death is not in vain. In fact, Lord, we know it's not in vain. Because we are gathered on one accord to demand justice, a thorough investigation, and truth. Help us, Lord. Give us the wisdom that we need, the fortitude that we need, the intrepidity that we need to keep going forward. Bless this family, God. God, you've already blessed them in a mighty way. Continue to send angels around them to strengthen them every day of their lives. And God, we pray now in the name of Jesus for this community. Oh God, the secrets, let everything done in darkness be brought to light. In the name of Jesus. So God, we stand on your word tonight. We stand on your word believing that all things work together for the good of those who love you. And we love you tonight, God. This family loves you. So continue to strengthen them right now. In the name of Jesus. Bless us, family. We will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stand still just a second. Hold that hand. It's about community. Some said, what do you do when you've done all you can do? You stand. Hmm? Don't bow. Don't break. Don't go back. I will make this promise to you. The NAACP, we don't move in fast. Because we're very deliberate. But when we move in, we stay in. Amen. We're not here just while the cameras are here. We're here working on this every day. Amen. December 13th, Saturday. I'm going to ask, I didn't even ask him. I hope he doesn't get too mad with me. My Vice President, Courtney Patterson, work with Deborah Maxwell, Yara, who's our field director, and this pastor, and the pieces of the branch to go ahead and make it real. 10 o'clock on Saturday, December 13th. We want to permit, we want to map out a march in honor of Leonard Lacey. We're going to invite all the media to come. If by then we've heard the U.S. federal attorney is going to do a full event, we're going to announce that and celebrate that. If not, we're going to march we're going to pray, we're going to stand, we're going we're gonna to do what we got to do legally until justice comes, yes, sir. until truth comes. Uh -huh. Say December 13th. December 13th. Saturday morning. Saturday morning. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Remember Lenny Lacey. Remember Lenny Lacey. Walk with us. Walk with us. March with us. March with us. Stand with us. Stand with Claudia. Stand with Claudia. Stand with, Claudia. Stand with, Claudia. Stand with Pierre. Stand with, Pierre. Stand with this family. When you've done all, when you've done all 
that you know how to do. Stand. Amen? Amen. 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 We'll see you then.